Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are joined um, by our colleagues, Morgan and Jacob, to go over uh, with the Oklahoma State Department of Health, and they're going to be sharing the Oklahoma Healthy Brain Initiative. Um, they have a lot of really great resources and tools. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free. We're a small group. You can unmute your lines. You can put something in the chat. I'll be watching the chat. If you're watching this recording and have any questions at all, please let me know. I'll be sure to forward your response um, to, or your question to Morgan and Jacob. And with that said, I'll turn it over to you guys. Well, thank you so much for that introduction, Laura. And we'll also have our uh, program contact information at the end of the presentation uh, so people can reach out to us directly with questions if they'd like to as well. Uh, but again, thank you so much for the introduction and for having us here uh, to present uh, for the rural uh, for the Office of Rural Health. We're really happy to be here today. Um, my uh, program manager, Morgan, will uh, be presenting in the second half of the presentation, but I will be uh, taking us through the first half here. Uh, like Laura said, my name is Jacob Guinan. I'm the program coordinator for the Oklahoma Healthy Brain Initiative, which is uh, the Oklahoma State Department of Health's uh, Bold Funded Alzheimer's and Dementia Program. I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time today talking about uh, our program and what we do in general, uh, and also uh, our, our uh, coalition, which is a statewide group of uh, stakeholders coming from across the state uh, um, to come together and to promote a system of collaboration uh, among Oklahoma, uh, am among all of our stakeholders. Uh, our vision is to adv advance the brain health in Oklahoma. And our, some of our core values are to increase public awareness of Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, to provide an accessible location for resources regarding Alzheimer's and dementia in Oklahoma, uh, to identify opportunities for provider collaboration, uh, to inform providers about uh, proper early and accurate diagnosis, and to address the need for education among policymakers. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to describe the work of the Oklahoma Healthy Brain Initiative uh, because we do have so many different things that we're working on, but I kind of uh, talk about it as breaking it down into three different areas. We want to help uh, healthcare providers, uh, provide them with the training and education and information that they need um, to help, um, you know, have their patients have the best possible health outcomes when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia. We also really want to help uh, promote uh, healthy brain, healthy um, aging, and um, and keeping our brains healthy as we age. And we'll talk a little bit more about the things that we can do to reduce our risk for Alzheimer's and dementia a little bit further in this presentation. And we also want to uh, provide resources for caregivers and help them uh, give the best possible care for those that they're um, for their family members for that are living with Alzheimer's and dementia. Now, I talked about the coalition that we have, and we uh, our coalition is further broken down into five separate work groups. Uh, the first work group that I'll talk about is our policy development work group, which is uh, our group that comes together to work on the right, uh, advocating for the rights and needs of people living with Alzheimer's and dementia um, here in Oklahoma. So they're advocating at the state house, at the legislature um, in Oklahoma City um, for uh, legislation that benefits caregivers and that benefits um, the people living with dementia in our state. We also have a workforce development um, a work group that works on trying to provide more resources and education for um, people like yourselves, professionals in the healthcare um, space. Um, and so that's one of our most important work groups that we have um, in our coalition. We also have a public education work group, which really focuses on trying to um, you know, let uh, it's it, we're trying to let caregivers know about the resources that are available throughout the state, but we're also trying to educate the public about risk reduction um, for having a for reducing our risk of dementia as we age. We also have a data and surveillance work group, um, which works on uh, identifying and compiling data on Alzheimer's and dementia um, care in Oklahoma, and then we're uh, we uh, that work group also. Uh, we'll compile all of that data into uh, reports and infographics for us to share um, with our healthcare community and with our uh, legislatures to help everyone understand what's going on with Alzheimer's and dementia in our state. And we also have a Dementia Friendly Oklahoma work group, and we'll talk a little bit more about Dementia Friendly Oklahoma in a little bit, but it is essentially a training and recognition program. Um, that your organization can go through in order to have your staff trained uh, in order to identify uh, people who are living with Alzheimer's and dementia uh, who might be coming into your organization and how to respond to those people uh, in a helpful way. Uh, we're also uh, responsible for updating and uh, implementing the Oklahoma State Plan on Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, as you can see here. 
uh, our first uh, the state plan that we were first working on was from 2018 to 2022, and then our group came together and revised uh, that state plan uh, for 2023. And that uh, our current state plan will last until 2027, but we're currently in the implementation um, period for this. And so it's a really exciting time to get involved with the Oklahoma Healthy Brain uh, Initiative Coalition because we have uh, gotten a lot of our planning done. Now we're in this implementation phase. Um, trying to work to bring these um, these uh, these initiatives that we've planned um, to the state. And so if you would like to get involved in the Oklahoma Healthy Brain Initiative Coalition, um, you can reach out to Morgan or I directly via email. Uh, but we also have this uh, handy QR code um, that you can scan. You can scan your screen here and it'll take you to our stakeholder interest form. And you can fill that out and that'll put you uh, right into contact with uh, with Morgan and I. And we'll be happy to, to get in touch with you and get you involved with the coalition. We also, you know, we want to talk about, uh, when we're talking about uh, our Oklahoma Healthy Brand Initiative, we want to talk about why this is important for Oklahoma and what's the impact in our state. Um, because Alzheimer's and dementia do have a really big impact. You know, I think most of us on this call probably do have a friend or a family member that's been impacted by Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, and I think that won't be surprising when we look at the uh, statistics. We see that nearly 7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. Uh, and, uh, and by 2050, this number is projected to rise to nearly 13 million. We also have a lot of people who are providing unpaid care uh, for their friends, family, and neighbors. Over 11 million Americans uh, provide unpaid care for people living with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. Um, and this is also uh, the most expensive disease in the country as well. We see $360 billion uh, towards health and long-term care costs uh, for people living with dementia. Um, and it's uh, projected to reach nearly $1 trillion uh, by the year 2050. And so this is, um, this is growing. It's a, we're seeing the prevalence of Alzheimer's and dementia grow as well. And here in Oklahoma, uh, you know, we are not immune to this. We're seeing these impacts here in our state as well. Uh, we have over 70,000 people who are living with Alzheimer's disease here in Oklahoma, um, and a lot of people who are caring for those as well. You know, we saw the caregiver statistic um, on the previous slide, and we have a lot of caregivers uh, here in Oklahoma um, as well who are dealing with this. Uh, and we, one of the things that we also talk about, I mean, this is a nationwide problem, uh, that there is a healthcare workforce shortage, but here in Oklahoma, we are especially hard hit by it. We do not have enough uh, geriatricians or neurologists to meet the needs um, of our population that's living with Alzheimer's and dementia. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we're so glad to be here talking with you all today, because, uh, because we do lack the specialists um, to meet the care needs of our population here in Oklahoma. And so a lot of people will be turning to their uh, you know, their local, uh, maybe rural uh, health system or uh, their, their primary care doctor. And so it's important for all of our healthcare system to be knowledgeable about this and to be prepared for it um, as we start to see more patients uh, dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia. Continuing to talk about uh, the prevalence of Alzheimer's and dementia, you know, they are, um, it, it is a really prevalent disease, especially in our older population. Uh, we, we see that one in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. And uh, it is really prevalent in our 65 plus population. About one in nine people over age 65 uh, has Alzheimer's disease or, or some type of dementia. We do also see some populations of people uh, that, are in a, that are at increased risk for developing Alzheimer's. We see that older black Americans are about twice as likely uh, to develop Alzheimer's compared to white Americans. And we see that Hispanic Americans are about one and a half times likely um, to have Alzheimer's compared to white Americans. We also know that some of our other populations that we have here in Oklahoma, like our American Indian population, um, also seems to be at a greater risk for developing dementia. And we also have a lot of veterans um, here in Oklahoma as well. Uh, I started my career with the Alzheimer's Association uh, doing outreach to the veteran uh, population in Montana and the VA health system up there. And it is because the veterans are, do seem to be at increased risk of dementia because of things like post-traumatic stress disorder and moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries. Uh, increasing the risk of developing dementia later in life. We also see that about two thirds of Americans uh, living with Alzheimer's are women. Um, and you know, we're not exactly sure why, why that disparity exists. We know that par it's partially explained by women living longer um, than men, uh, but that doesn't fully explain it. There does seem like there's probably some sort of genetic or hormonal difference um, that does lead women to develop Alzheimer's disease um, uh, more so than men. 
And so it's important to know about this uh, prevalence information too, so we know which populations are most at risk. And, uh, you know, we also, uh, I mentioned that a large part of what we're trying to do through the Oklahoma Healthy Brain Initiative is educate people about risk reduction um, for Alzheimer's and dementia. And that's certainly one area that I think we can work with healthcare providers um, to educate patients about risk reduction um, for Alzheimer's and dementia. And as you can see uh, from our information on the slide here, Alzheimer's and dementia is just one of the five chronic diseases um, that if we work on these four behaviors, uh, we can reduce our risk of developing um, these chronic diseases. And the four behaviors are tobacco use, poor nutrition, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and excessive alcohol use. And we know that, of course, these are, these are bad for all of these uh, five chronic diseases it lists here, like cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory disease, and diabetes, um, but also talking with patients uh, about Alzheimer's and keeping our brain healthy as we age, um, I think can be really important and, and impactful as well. And specifically, uh, we have identified uh, 10 different areas we can work on uh, to reduce our risk for developing Alzheimer's and dementia as we age. And we call these the 10 ways to love your brain. Um, and these, this is, uh, so we can provide some material to you all uh, about the 10 ways to love your brain if you'd be interested um, in ordering some for your patients. We'll have some more information about that uh, in the second half of our presentation. Um, but I think this can be a really helpful guide for starting conversations with patients about brain health, like we said. And uh, the 10 ways, I'll just run through them really quickly, are to wear a helmet to prevent, pre uh, prevent head injury, because we know that moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries increase the risk of developing dementia. Uh, we want to encourage people to get at least seven hours a night of sleep uh, and good quality sleep, because uh, there does seem to be, uh, that does seem to be a factor as well. Uh, reducing uh, excess alcohol use seems to help our brain uh, age in a more healthy way. We know that exercise is really important, um, just like it is with every aspect of our health for the rest of our body too. Um, we do see that a formal education tends to be um, a protective factor for Alzheimer's and dementia too. Uh, you know, people who've had like a college education um, seem to be at lower risk, but even, you know, doing things as we age, educating ourselves as we age, seems to be able to uh, increase the cognitive stimulation or reduce our risk as well. Um, so older people can do things like uh, learning a new language or uh, learning a new instrument or even going to uh, audit uh, classes at their local community college, um, things like that. But continuing education does seem to help reduce risk. Uh, we know that smoking is bad for every aspect of our health, and it's bad for our brains, too. Um, and so maybe that's if we talk about uh, smoking in the context of reducing our risk for Alzheimer's and dementia, maybe it'll help give uh, somebody just that extra push uh, to help them finally quit. Uh, we know that heart disease is also another risk factor um, for, for developing Alzheimer's and dementia, and especially that vascular dementia um, that we see. Nutrition, uh, diet and nutrition do seem to have a big impact as well. Um, diets like the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, the dietary approach to stopping hypertension, um, seem to be um, like some health, some diets that are good for our, our uh, brain and body and helping us age in a healthy way. Uh, taking care of our mental health uh, is also another lifestyle or wellness risk factor. Um, that could help us reduce our risk for developing dementia. And in fact, uh, one of the things they've really... Um, uh, drill down on that when it comes to mental health is that it seems like people with untreated depression um, have a higher risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. And then finally, socialization, making sure that our older adults aren't isolated and that they're still spending time with friends and family and being in the community. That seems to be um, a way for us to reduce our risk of developing Alzheimer's as well. Um, and just uh, aging in a more healthy way. Um, we see, we do see the people who aren't isolated and that are socially engaged um, with their peers and their community and their family do seem to, to have a lower risk of Alzheimer's and just an overall healthier aging experience. And so now we've talked a little bit uh, about um, you know, some of the some of the initiatives through the Oklahoma Healthy Brain uh, Initiative. I'm going to pass it over to my program manager, Morgan Hamilton, who will talk a little bit about some of our other projects that we have going on. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to kind of share some of the things that we have going on. Um, you know, the coalition and the state plan are just part of what we do. And so excited to share with some more information um, about what we have to offer you all um, out in the rural communities and just across Oklahoma in general. Next slide, please, Jacob. 
So Dementia Friendly Oklahoma is a recognition program that we have here through the State Health Department. And what it's a part of Dementia Friendly America. We're a part of their network. I am the state lead. And so this is a statewide effort for us to bring organizations, businesses, campuses, restaurants, faith organizations, even communities, towns, and cities to be more dementia friendly. And so what that means is that we are trying to train folks um, out in the communities and in businesses to communicate better with someone that might be facing the disease, to look at the physical aspects of that business and organization to make sure that it's friendly for someone of any age to enter, let alone someone with dementia and their caregiver, um, to bring that education and awareness piece, because you never know who you're going to run across um, that might be facing Alzheimer's and dementia. And our ultimate goal is to make it so that our communities and our businesses are dementia friendly so that, um, as Jacob said, socialization is really big. We want to make sure that someone that has the disease, as well as their caregiver, can still feel comfortable and safe to go out into the communities in which they live and maintain a good quality of life. Um, so we're trying to do that education piece. So when they go out and about in, in their community, they feel like people understand or they have a better understanding uh, that their business and everything is going to be more opening and welcoming if they do bring their loved one with them. And so that is our ultimate goal. So if you would like to have your business or organization trained, we would love to come out and do some training with you all. We have window clings that we provide that say you're a dementia-friendly Oklahoma partner. We also have um, a logo that you can utilize on your website, your social media media, your email signature, and then we also place you on our website listed as a Dementia Friendly Oklahoma partner. So if anyone is trying to um, find a business that is has been trained, they um, will see you on our website. Um, so if you're interested, there's a QR code here. We'd love to set up that presentation. It's a 45-minute presentation. I typically say an hour just because we do get probably 10 to 15 minutes of interaction and question and answer um, during the presentation. So it can go up to an hour, but we can do these in person. We can do these virtually, but we would just love to train as many folks as we can in Oklahoma so that we can really make sure that our state is inclusive to those that are faced with this disease. Next slide, please, Jacob. So this is just kind of a brief overview. This is as of last week, I will say our numbers have increased due to some county health departments we have trained um, last week, but we are up to about, I believe, 30 nine partners um, at this point across the state. And so we, this is just kind of showing, we launched this program in June of 2023. And so we are slowly increasing our um, businesses and organizations and county health departments specifically right now that we are training, but we will train anybody that is interested. We do just ask that the majority of staff attend so that we can make sure we're getting as many trained within that organization before they receive their recognition status. Um, because it doesn't help if we train one staff member, but nobody else um, learns or is trained with them. Cannot guarantee that that person coming in is going to just be with that person. And we want to train from the front desk to the people that are in a warehouse, um, to the people that are down doing accounting, because not only is it what happens within your business and within your business walls, but you never know what they can take from the training that will help someone out within the community outside of those walls. Um, so it's not just a program that is just for the business, but it's just to make the community um, where the business and organization is as a whole better. Next slide, please. So we also provide some collateral materials that are available um, for anyone to order free of charge. We did these in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association. So we took some of their materials and we revamped them, um, added our logos. But we have, um, these are all fact sheets. So these three are fact sheets over the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's. And on the back, it has Alzheimer's versus age-related changes. So it kind of talks about what that difference is. We have a fact sheet on staying safe. So ways that you can keep someone living with the disease safe. And then we have one on understanding Alzheimer's and dementia. So it talks about what's going on in the brain, what the difference is between Alzheimer's and dementia and some risk factors. And these are all available in Spanish. Next slide, please. 
Then we also have some rat cards. And so these rat cards, again, are also available in Spanish. Um, but we have one on how to manage stress as a caregiver and be a healthier caregiver, how to have those tough conversations with the person, such as getting them to the doctor, um, how to get them to stop driving, and how to take care of those legal and financial plans. And then probably one of the most um, requested would be the stages of Alzheimer's disease. So it goes through the three stages um, and gives just a brief overview of the disease. Next slide, please. And then we also have some information from the inner, I'm always going to say this wrong, it's the Indigenous, International Indigenous on Aging. I said that right. Um, IA squared uh, organization. And so they have flyers and rat cards that are available um, that you can print and put out. So they are tribal related. And so these are a few of the ones that we have and that we have, again, free of charge for anyone that would be interested. So that first one just talks about risk reduction. Um, the second one then is their version of the 10 warning signs um, that might be dementia. And then these three rat cards are really awesome because on the back of each of them, it actually has a recipe that would be culturally acceptable or culturally um, maybe more relevant than one that we would um, have if we didn't get them from IA squared. So they're pretty awesome. They've got different recipes on the back of all of them, but there's one on their, you know, my native plate. So what you should look at proportion wise on your plates, um, how to make little lifestyle changes to have big differences, and then just that healthy food, healthy brain, um, why it, how it impacts. Next slide, please. And then, as Jacob said, we have a coalition and they are working on some amazing things. And this just happens to be one of the documents that they have created so far. But this is a two pager. So it's a front and back and it's notes to take to a doctor's appointment. So this is something that a caregiver can fill out. Um, and it's got questions on, you know, the first one says, how would you describe the overall mental state of your loved one? About the same as the last of it, is it better or worse? And then we give them some things to consider that they might not see necessarily as mental health, but it gives it kind of gives them an idea of what they should be looking for, or what they might be seeing, and it gives them a little place to write some notes so that they can take that to the doctor and show it to the doctor um, and on their next visit to kind of keep track of how things are going. You never want to get to the doctor's office and they say, so how is everything? And you go, well, there have been some changes or, oh, we've had some hiccups. And then when they say, well, what are those hiccups or what are those changes? And they say, well, you know, I don't really know. This is a way to make that easier for them so they don't have to try to remember it. It's already written down when they go in so that they can actually um, take care of and address the situation and the issues that they're having. This one is also available in Spanish if uh, you would like to request it. Next slide, please. If you would like to have any of these materials on hand, you can use this QR code and it takes you to a form for ordering. We do have a limit on how many you can order just because we don't have an unlimited amount. Um, we do have to print these occasionally. And so you feel free to print uh, to put in an order, we will gladly mail them out to you as soon as we as soon as possible. We usually do mailings every week. Um, if you run out, you can always fill out the form again and reorder. So there, it's not a one-stop shop. You only get what you get the first time. Um, you can get multiple orders if you are running out and have a need for them. We would love to supply them with you to hand out to patients, to caregivers. If you have an event coming up that you feel it is, um, this would be something good to have at a table or to make sure that it's available in a packet. Just let us know you can potentially order more than what um, we have in the order form. There is a spot on the form that you can say that you have an event and you would need more materials. And we'll work with you on that. Next slide, please. So I want to talk a little bit about some resources that are available and out there in case you guys did not know about them. So we always have AbleTech, which is a great resource out of OSU. And so they provide assisted technology devices um, for anybody. So if you are needing resources, um, they have things like medical beds. They have recliners that are electrical. They have clocks, phones. 
If you've ever heard of the cats for dementia folks, um, the purring cats, they're pretty awesome. They also have dogs, I believe. Um, and so they do have a sliding scale on how they would get them. They also do take to no donations, some donations. But if you have, you know, materials that you are looking for, you have patients that are needing some assisted devices, I highly recommend reaching out to Able Tech. <clears throat> the Oklahoma Dementia Care Network is our geriatric workforce enhancement program here in Oklahoma. They're based out of OU, um, but they are a great resource. They hold Project Echoes, um, specifically in Alzheimer's and dementia and resources. So they are a great resource to reach out to if you're looking for more training and education. Then you have 211, which is an amazing resource across the state for anyone that is looking for resources that can't find them, whether they're needing financial assistance on bills um, or they're just needing to find an organization to connect with. Oklahoma Human Services, they have the Community Living and Aging Protective Services program, so um, OKDHS um, CAP. Uh, they handle things such as lifespan respite grants. They do adult day service. They um, kind of oversee some adult day services. They work with our AAAs, um, the area-wide aging agencies. So they're a great resource to have if you're looking for something specifically for um children or grandparents that might be raising kids or dealing with the disease or in the elderly realm. The Oklahoma Healthy Aging Initiative is fantastic if you're looking for presentations and education. They do physical activity classes. They have diabetes classes. They also do um, healthy mind, healthy body classes. Um, they are a great resource if you are looking for someone to come out and do a presentation uh, or to connect others for education. I would highly recommend uh, reaching out to them. Um, obviously, you have the Alzheimer's Association. They do all dementias, not just Alzheimer's, but they do support groups, education programs. They have a fantastic helpline that's based here in the United States that's 24-7, so anybody can reach out to them and talk to them, um, get tips and tricks, get materials sent to them if they're wanting to do more reading. If they've got questions on research or drugs, they're a great contact. Um, they can send out that information. And the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service is also fantastic for that educational piece. And each county, they kind of do things a little differently, but they have master gardeners programs. Some of them do nutritional classes, diabetes classes. Uh, they're a great resource if you're looking to do that connection at that local level for, ed for further education. Jacob, next slide, please. And then in case you weren't aware of where our Oklahoma Area aging, Agencies on Aging are or who you should be reaching out to, we wanted to provide this map so that you know um, which one would be covers your counties or your specific areas. If you're not connected with them, I highly recommend that you do um, call that 1-800 number and get connected to the local um, AAA in your area. They provide fantastic planning and resources. They'll help folks with applications for Medicare, Medicaid. Um, you know, some of them even do some work on the VA side where they can help with um, filling out forms or they can connect. Some of them do respite. Um, some even offer, you know, just other educational programs. They're connected um, to resources. So they're a great person to have in your back pocket if you're trying to assist a patient or a client and connect them to, to resources in your area. Next slide, please. So that's kind of all we have for you guys today. At this point, if you guys have any questions, we would love to, you know, come off mute and we would love to answer them or put them in the chat and Jacob and I will answer them as we can. But that is our email address. If you email healthybrain at health.ok.gov, Jacob and I will receive it. We would love to connect with you if you, you know, after the fact, want to find um, collateral materials or you're wanting to sign up for Dementia Friendly and you just can't find the forms, email us, let us know. We'd love to get with you guys, um, do some trainings. We can also do educational presentations um, as well as we can create presentations. So if you're needing in services or something like that, please reach out to us. We would love to help with that educational piece. Um, but if there's any questions now, we'd love to take them and help help answer and, and get you guys connected to whatever resources you might need. Please utilize us as a resource finder if you need it. 
Not seeing any questions in the chat, Laura, at this time. I'm not either. Um, thank you guys uh, for a great presentation and a lot of resources. And we love having uh, knowing someone to call on when we do get the questions. Um, for everyone on the call or watching the recording, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, I know a lot of times if you're like me, you get off the call and you're like, oh, I thought of something or I run across something. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, I am not seeing any questions come in, but thank you guys for your time today. And one last call for questions. All right, I'm not seeing any, but thank you guys so much for your time today. Thank you for having us. Thank you.